if I did a review like this the whole time? What is going on, everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm be doing a review on a device that I was randomly sent, I think, for a review. I don't even know what this is. Uh, I, I do know that that is my phone, which I love going off. Um, and I got some, I got some sticky shit on my fingers. Call me Sticky Fingers from Onyx. Oh, okay. Dominer, that is the RDA. Simple box, no scratch and sniff, really nothing going on on the outside of this box. I think someone had contacted me that owns this company and said, listen, I got this RDA. I'm wondering if you'll do a review for it or maybe that's not the case. I don't quite remember the deal with this. So if someone sent it to me, here's your review. If someone didn't send it to me and I bought this, then congratulations, Jay, you've succeeded in doing absolutely nothing because this is not a dripper I haven't heard anything about. I don't even know the company. Omen Designs. I just looked up this company and basically they have a Shapeways account and Shapeways is basically a website where you put your CAD drawing and they print it out and then you take the 3D print if you don't have 3D printers. But this isn't 3D printed. It would be really awkward for a dripper to be 3D printed, but fun fact for you is usually when you're designing a dripper, you do a 3D print of that dripper to make sure that it's functioning properly. I guess it would be possible to 3D print a whole dripper, like actually produce it, but it would be very expensive. You can also 3D print metal, like there's a way to 3D print platinum, gold. Seriously, that's not a joke. Look it up. I'm not trolling you, I promise you, that's real. I don't know what to say about the company, I don't know what to say about the dripper. I figured the best way to do it is just to bring it down and let me show you everything inside of the box and how this dripper functions. Let's flip it. On the front of the box, it's gonna say Dominar on the top, there's nothing on the side. Color configurations with the name of the company right here. Again, I'm not quite sure as to why there's a black and stainless steel rendition, but I got the green. I don't even like green, but then again, I can't really see it, and I see it as gold, so I guess it really doesn't matter. And then on the bottom of the box, there's your warning. This right here, I don't know what to say about. Keep away from high temperature. You gotta be vaping some cool ass shit then if you're trying to keep this away from temperature because drippers typically get very, very hot. I can't say I've ever seen that warning on anything before. Open it up, here we go. Now there's really not a whole lot inside of this box. There's your dripper, go over that shortly. You get two peripheral pouches. In one peripheral pouch, you're gonna get an extra 810 drip tip, typical stuff. So I'm gonna swap this out of the Ultim one that is currently inside of it. In your peripheral pouch, you're gonna get a triple tree, some extra O-rings, some extra post screws, and then a long ass squonk pin. The squonk port on this screw is very, very, very tiny, which tells me that you're gonna get a lot of suck back when you use that squonk pin, but for the purposes of this review, we're not gonna be doing a squonk. On the bottom, there's no visible markings at all, aside from it just looking like a five-star rim, which were really big in the 90s, and I guess they're still big now. That's exactly what that looks like, or like a, a pinwheel jammy. That's my version of circus music. No logos on the bottom, on the dripper. It's literally across the board, totally blank. 810 drip tip on the top, really nothing special here. Top cap has got these really cool fins in it. You will not be able to utilize this in single coil just because you have airflow on both sides of the ports. And if you do use it as a single coil, well, you're gonna be getting air from both sides and it's gonna be an absolute horrendous amount of airflow. This thing wide open is out of control. It's almost too much airflow. I said like an emerald green. Oh, to me that looks like teal. Okay, I can see more So like a teal. blue? Like a blue green. Bluish green, yeah. Okay, uh, both of them are broken. This Mermaid is gray. Tail. Okay. Uh, That's a good color. I like, yeah. I may tell. <laughs> Here is the deck. Now, I just did a review on a device where I could not figure out the type of configuration. And still to this day, I don't think anybody found anything. They found the profit, which I do have, and it's not quite the same thing. I'm starting to believe the other day when I did the dripper review where I was looking at the T-Post clamp and I thought that was in something else, is actually not in anything. I have the profit. It's not in that. I have the Titan. That's not the same thing. So maybe that is what's unique. Now, this has a big ass block in the center. They could have separated this and made these individual posts, but there's not really much of a reason. 
Let me tell you why. Negative, which is milled directly into the deck, and over here you have your insulator, which this is your positive. Contacts are right here on the side. This is the larger style Allen key, not the smaller. The machining on the top cap and the barrel is really, really thin and feels really, really cheap. This, however, feels good, and I mean, it's not perfect, but I'm assuming for the price point that this is at, this is gonna be more than worth it. I mean, that's kind of a rough spitball, but threading for the post screws is really nice and fluid, very smooth. Almost, yeah, look, not the tightest. They almost feel like they're a little too small for the threading. It's like, no, same thing, okay. Someone had mentioned in a comment that when I do builds like this, I don't like the device. That's not necessarily true, however, I figured that if I'm not gonna really be using a dripper, that there's no point of putting a really nice build inside of it. So, I just do regular wraps of regular builds. That is the Dominar RDA by Omen Designs. Let's bring it on the top. Here we go. Hello. Hello, hello. What's up there, shoelace pants? Back on the top of the Dominar RDA sitting on top of the detonator. Let me show you some vapor production. We are working with 70 watts. Let me pump it up a little bit more. 78 watts on a 0.3. Very, very simple build, nothing crazy. Check out the airflow. I have all but two open, and then at that point, they're only about halfway open. The amount of airflow that you get out of this with all of those wide open is like Warhead or Phenotype style. It's entirely too much airflow. Oh man. With all that airflow comes the chance of not enough of flavor. And that has nothing to do with the build. I know people are gonna say that it's regular round wire, it's not gonna give me enough of flavor. That's not true. All I'm gonna say to counter that is give it a try for yourself. Take Fuse Claptons, take regular round, take the same exact build that you would normally do, make that round, wick it up like you normally would, and I guarantee you, the flavors are almost identical. Now, I'm a very avid user of Fuse Clapton's because I feel it does give me a little bit more flavor. And you'd be real hard pressed to tell the differences between the two. I am using a different cotton here. It's still cotton, man, but it's the actual pads. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll post the link right there. There is too much airflow with this. Flavor is gonna be dictated by the build that you put inside of it. It's also gonna be dictated by the cotton that you're using, the wire, how you built the wire. There are so many things that factor in flavor, but when you have too much airflow, you have too much airflow. So what I'm gonna try to do is cut down all of the airflow with the exception of a half of one port. Everything else is totally sealed up. That's too tight, that's not gonna work. Try to just do one all the way open. See, now I'm getting more flavor, but it's very, very muted. The chamber inside of this is very large. It is a 25 millimeter, and I don't find it to be anything special. It kind of reminds me of the Cosmonaut, the way that you wick it, the way that you put the coils in. Again, it's not a bad dripper for what it is. However, I don't know the price point of this. It's very, very difficult to find anything on this RDA whatsoever. I couldn't even find a site that was selling it. I really don't know anything about it. I'm gonna make this real simple. If I was to rate this drip on a zero to 10, I'm gonna put it in the four, 4.5 block. I can't see going any higher just because 
well, it's just a lot of airflow, and I don't like the color, but we're not going for the aesthetics, we're going for the functionality. I'm having a very hard time getting really good flavor out of this. Even if I reduce the airflow almost down to a bare minimum, it's still reduced flavor. There's just entirely too much chamber. Now, if you're gonna put really big jammies in this, you may get excellent flavor, but where I'm at right now, even if I was to use Fuse Clapton's, it'd be the same type of deal. You can see all the vapor production. I'm getting it, and I'm tasting something. I think it's more t-shirt than it is anything else. Probably should not have ate that detergent tab today. That's not what that's called. You know what it is. It's because this morning, on top of my pork roll, egg, and cheese, I had a bounty sheet. That really adds the linen flavor that I'm getting. I know it's an awkward rating that I'm giving it. I just can't justify anything higher than that. If it's $20 or 15 bucks for the dripper, I'm gonna go five, 5.5. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be at that price point and it's gonna be much higher than that, probably 30, 35. I don't even know why you would buy this dripper. I really don't. The only thing that this dripper has going for it is the amount of airflow you get. That's it, and I've kept it real. Have you? Jesus.